Good evening and welcome to the Next Gen Season 7 team. This is the Parawax Group A1s and we're here at Silverstone Classic. We've decided to go back in time to this old layout. And we have a full house. And we're in the BMW M330s with the top four unable to qualify. That means the top four in the championship will be starting at the back of the pack in reverse order, so they'll have their set times to do. And uh, if they don't do it, they'll uh, end up having to drop to the back of the pack at the start of the race. Joining me for qualifying because of that is Jack. Hello, everyone. Nice to be here, George. It's been a while since being here, but in the same box. Yeah, yeah, just a while. I, I, see, I say a while, ruin lay assault. But we, we won't mention that. <laughs> <laughs> In the group A1s. <laughs> mm. um, but for another four grids for tonight, which is good to see, and a few debutantes. Yeah, a few debutantes uh, in the form of Cobra 2012. He was a, a late entry tonight, so late that the next late entry was two minutes after him. Sorry, Bruce, if you're watching. Uh, also, we've got Mixwa in as well. It's Mikey. He races. Uh, normally in the Cleos on a Monday night, he's finally got himself a chance to race in all three tonight, which is good. Uh, thanks to Tyler House, he's unable to make tonight's race, so hopefully he'll be back next week. He said he was, but something came up last minute, which is a shame for him. Now, obviously the top four in the championship, we'll, we'll have a look at the championship standings in a minute. Um, unable to qualify, uh, obviously including yourself, otherwise you wouldn't be in here. Mm. Um, but the the big the big person who I believe can qualify is Adam. It is. So I think he's definitely one to look out for. Oh, if so, and pre last season's champion, all round good guy. Hasn't had the most electrifying start he would have wanted to his to his second you know defensive season in terms of the championship, but. This is Adam we're talking about. He won round here last time out, so if anyone's a favourite, it's going to be him tonight. Now, speaking of the standings, let's have a look. Obviously, you are leading at said standings at the moment, Jack, on 53 points. Uh, with the Les, hot on your heels on 52. Cam's on 51, with four fish on 48. So, five points covering the top four. Uh, a further 11 back sees Adam Morris in fifth in the standings on 37 points. So a little bit of ground to make up this early, but the pressure's going to start to tell soon because we do have two less rounds. Only 10 rounds for this season. Uh, this will mark, effectively, 40% of the season. Um, which is incredible, really, because this time last season, we did uh, this would be four of 12, so only a third of the way through. So possibly not quite as important, Jack. Don't know. I, th I think I think the, the the key time is going to come sooner rather than later. There will be a cut-off point of who's going to be in that you know central championship fight. I, I certainly can't rule out Adam at the moment in terms of my own championship ambitions. Looking at the other four who are in the reverse grid, you can't rule them out because all you know the other three outside of myself have driven fantastically this season. They've been excellent. Uh, so we'll see we'll see when brands hatch indy happens i think that will be when we start weeding a few drivers out so i'm gonna go you're just pulling up there to do your lap we'll go we'll go with a lap for someone in a minute uh i'll see d white house on your screen at the moment sixth place at the moment 32 points joint with johnny these two have quite the fearsome reputation of being together nine times out of ten on the track and they're together in the standings so, should be interesting. Shadow Stalker, a bit of a a quiet driver as he goes off after Beckett's just before Chapel. Um, bit of a quiet driver during the races, but ninth, he's in eighth place overall. Twenty three points to his name. It's been a good start. Oh, he's been brilliant. He's had a, he seems to have had a much better season than last time out. I think the advantage he's had is that he's in the Audi. Uh, as normal and he's got to grips with it really really well and I think it was a good car choice for him for this season he's using it to it's a good effect fair play to the guy 
Yeah, he's uh, four points again to the good against Bob, who's in ninth. Tyler House, obviously not here, with nine points. Tim has nine points along with Rally Matt. Uh, Jamesy on eight. Traumatic Dave and Weedaz on seven. Big Bloody B on five and GT5 Vass uh, currently not scoring a point during the season. That's a good time from Mix at the top there, 34.5. That is right on the money there. Comes Adam, he's just done a 34, right? That's much more like it from him. Those two are really on the ball. Rally Matt has to be said as well. That's a good time. But there is the man who should have had an even better result last, last season, Port Mark 1. That's a great lap. Yeah, Bob Washington last season getting very unlucky with a bit of contact uh, during the race. But... We know he's quick around it, and in this car, he, he um, if, I, if I'm memory serves me correct, Bob is in this car permanently when it's an open choice race. He is. So yeah. he's going to have a nice bit of experience as he almost goes off and like a little slide through back hits. It's going to be interesting to see what he can pull out of the bag here. Fifth currently on the grid. Uh, Mix, uh, we're going to call him Mikey because mm. pretty much everyone in the paddock calls him that. Um, so yeah, I'm just behind. Mikes. Yeah, Mike's in here. Let's go on board with Mike's. Uh, so here we go. And with the final chicane up towards uh, Cup's corner. Obviously, the old first corner of the GP. Quite a long right hand. You've got to be very patient with the throttle because it does tighten on the exit. But again, love to join that from Mike's. It's just not quite hitting the curb. Which is perfect. Maggots a flat left hander into Beckett's. Which is quite a distance away compared to what it is nowadays. You hit the brakes down to second, get the car pitched in, bring the throttle on, and you've got to be careful because the back end will come around you if you're not careful. Chapel is just a, a simple flat left hander. You can take any line through that and you'll still be the same speed on the exit. Down the hanger straight towards Stowe corner. Stowe, very, very quick corner, down one gear. Possibly just keeping it in fourth. No, down to third as, as suspected. You can hook it on the curb on the inside with the with the inside tyre, but again, it can cause you issues instead. Club corner, very similar to Stowe in this layout. Just down a gear, get it tucked in, and then bring the throttle on after. You do have a little bit of leeway with a couple of patches of concrete on the outside. Abbey, flat left hander, should be no problems through there, unless you're a control user on a pad. That's about the only time that corner gets anything interesting uh, when you're driving it. The Woodcut Chicane. Now just a flat right-hander. Hit the brakes into third. Interesting line there from Mike. He's using all the curb, which can unsettle the car. As you can see there, he's just had a nice little drift over the, over the start-finish line um, to complete that lap. He's currently sat on a 134.1. Rally Matt's just gone quicker as well to push Adam down to third place. That is an incredible lap from, 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 I'm going to say Mike's, I said Mike's before, didn't I? That is a brilliant lap. He's on the money in terms of potentially getting pole position. He'd be the first debutant driver since Bruce back uh, last season, wasn't it, at Emma Jordan, mm. to score pole position. He could, if all pans out in the race, could become the seventh driver ever to score a victory on their debut in the Group A1. But... The top three are looking very, very quick at the minute. Yeah, James, he's just gone through up into eighth, into sixth place, sorry, the 136.3, 2.2 of the pace. Um, it's pretty weird. you got the top three, then you got the two, well, and then it's pretty much fourth downwards uh, are fairly close. I would say um, that the, 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 t the two stuck with glue... <laughs> DYR, so I've used it, Johnny. <laughs> Funnily enough, this is a true fact, this job. They have both got the same amount of appearances in the group they It's so, no word of a lie. I think they're on, I want to say, somewhere about 46, 47. Uh, which are, uh, there's Cobra 2012, where the debut on. He's eighth at the moment, 2.8 off the pace. A good start, a good solid start at the moment. Mid, nicely mid pack. Um, had a big bloody bee who I believe is on controller tonight. He is. That's a good effort from big bloody bee. Dramatic Dave's in 10th. He's looking all right so far. He said he was struggling. 
when we were in the lobby chat before. But Jimmy. he's got himself marginally ahead of it. It could be a big battle for between these three. I think, oh, as I was saying, that big bloody bee's going a second quicker, but it could be a good battle there for You've also got and Dave and Shadowstalk, don't you? Yeah. As Dave, Traumatic Dave comes across to finish his qualifying session down in 10th place, we got Tim on the Sounds screen great. now. Tim just going through the woodcut chicane across the line. Doesn't improve. Who else we got coming across the line? Adam Morris puts it second on the grid and rally Matt in the pits, meaning he will not better his time. That's uh, good effort though from rally Matt. It, it, uh, I, I race with him on, on Wednesdays and I, I <laughs> with enough rally against him on dirt rally. He is a very quick driver. And uh, he's, he is getting used to, to Project Cars too, it's, it's fair to say. Uh, Cobra just coming around to do his final lap. He crosses the line. Puts himself sixth place with a 136.2. A fantastic final lap. Mike's or Mix. Mikey, how are you want to call him? Uh, will take pole position. Uh, he didn't actually have to finish qualifying either. He came back to the pits. So, and this is Turbo Monday, which means if any of these drivers get fastest lap, they get an extra point on top, as well as the pole yeah, position. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, sorry, cheers, Jack. Uh, Mikey does take pole position away from Adam Morris by just 0.396 of a second. Rally Matt heads at row two alongside him, D. Whitehouse. Row three, Johnny and Cobra. Row four, Jamesy and Bob Mark one. Row five is Big Bloody B with Traumatic Dave alongside. And Tim and Shadowstalker put, are put together on row six. Row seven has four fish and Cam 23 Diz with the final positions going to the Les and Jack TM53 synopsis. Those four forced to start that way due to their... Um, reverse grid for the top four chariot contenders. Let me just await the, the field to get going here at Silverstone Classic. And as I say, that's we're going to sink in. It's quite a tightly packed grid, so we're looking out for anything that could happen in the mid-pack. As we have three red lights. We're green at Silverstone for round number four of the Paramax Group A1s. And it looks like we've got away a bit cleanly. A bit of door bumping from the mid-pack, but it looks like we've got away cleanly off the start line. Adam Morris leads into Cops Corner for the first time of 14. Rally Mats has managed to gain the places as well to second. Mikey looking to try and re-overtake him as quickly as possible. We're good through Cops Corner as we head towards Maggots and Beckett's. Rally Matt trying to defend off Mikey going into Beckett's now. Matt conceding that place, but here comes Bob looking around the outside. He's going to concede the place to D.I. has a good start from Bob up into fifth place. Cobra just behind. Um, and, oh! Big collision in the background. That's Traumatic Dave and Tim, I believe. Bit of contact in the background between those two drivers. That's the Les. He's just behind Jack. So Jack's overtaken Les in, the, in this process. As they head towards Club Corner. At the front, though, Adam Morris is under extreme pressure going through the Abbey, Abbey corner. Under the bridge as they come towards Woodcut for the first time of the race. Adam immediately having to go defensive. Mikey looking around the outside. Can he keep it there? Yes, he can. They're still side by side through the chicane. Adam Morris is going to have track position on the exit, though. So Adam Morris leads lap number one. And Jack on the grass, trying to pass Cam 123 Diz around the outside. Hing to Cops Corner. They're three wide. Contacts. It wasn't Cam, I think it might have been Johnny. It was Johnny on the middle there. Cam 123 Diz in the Mingano BMW, but Jack goes round. He drops to 10th. 
not ideal. Just three wide going into Cops doesn't normally work. See, Jack was on the grass trying to make that move stick going into the corner. But still a long time left for Jack to try and get back up the field. Tim has made his way back up into 12th and he's looking at Big Bloody B. You see how bumpy the track is as they go into Stowe. And Tim's gone round. Just a bit eager on the throttle. Back with the leading duo. They've managed to get away from Rally Mac, the second between these two and Matt right now. But Mikey, again, trying to force Adam Morris into a position he doesn't want, but Adam very cunningly positioning his car in such a way that Mikey can't get to the outside. But there isn't really enough of a chance to go to the inside, although he might have a good run coming out of the Woodcut Chicane. Not quite good enough. He tucks back in as they go through Cop's Corner. If those two work together, they'll pull away from Matt, and they, they can just have themselves to fight with. Jack up into eighth place now. He's ahead of four fish. I don't know what's up. The Les has gone down the order very, very quickly here. He's down into 14, so he's not had the best of races, has the Les. Cobra. Just going to stick with this battle for the lead. It is probably the battle to be watching. As Matt's in the background. Pulling little bits here and there. So he loses a touch on the straight, but the number 39 machine of Adam Morris keeping Mikey at bay. As they head towards Club Corner. I'm doing a fantastic job. Oh, lots of markers flying, obviously. Mikey trying a slightly different line through Club. I don't think he's paid off. He's lost time on the exit. Again, he will start to claw that back with the slipstream. And Adam, very close to going fully off the track there. Losing himself time because of that. So you don't get any traction when you're on the grass in these cars. As Adam goes a little bit sideways, he's starting to get a little bit erratic here. And Mikey senses the opportunity. Adam goes to cover. He hasn't gone over early enough, though. Mikey down the inside, into Cop's corner. Adam's going to try and hang it around the outside. This is for the lead of the race. And Adam, a fantastic bit of driving, keeps him in the lead just about. But it's Matt in the background they've got to be concerned about. To keep fighting like this, Matt is going to catch them. Mikey again having another little look into Beckett. Not quite going to pull off. The number 34 machine, although Adam Morris has just brought the back end out a little bit too much. And Mikey goes through into the lead. But without any slipstream. Oh, Mikey went to cover there. Mikey went to cover and he could not because Adam is still alongside up towards the straight. Matt is catching in the background. Mikey looks for the switch back, coming out of Stoke Corner. Not quite going to work. The car gets a, bit, a little bit too twitchy. And Matt should start getting a slipstream now. He's right in that zone. Through Club Corner. I have to stick with this battle because this is just getting closer and closer down past Abbey. Mikey looks at the inside, realizes there's no space, has to go to the outside, right where Adam wants him, but he's going to try now and break him into the woodcut chicane. It's not quite going to work. He's going to run wide. The game will probably give him a penalty, even though he doesn't really deserve one because he has lost time to rally Matt, who is now right on his tail. Cam Montage did has made his way up into fourth place, Jack into sixth. Four fish is up to eighth, and the Les is sat near the back in 13th. He's having a bit of issues here, trying to get through the field. He's got two cars around him. He's got Jamesy just ahead. That's Shadow Stock. He's passed now up into Cop's Corner. And then go around the outside of PZR Jamesy 77. Isn't going to quite work. Oh, Shadow Stock almost bins it. I think he does bin it in the end. No, there he is. Just shooting back across the screen. Meanwhile, the battle at the front between Adam Morris and Mikey is still going on as they head up towards 
Stowe corner for the fifth time of 14 and not even halfway through the race yet. And these guys are going hammer and tongs. And look who's joined them behind. There is Rally Matt. And if you look in the background, Cam 123Ds is the quickest man on the track right now. A 133.9 as Mikey has the inside for Abby, but he's going to have to give the room on the outside of the corner. He comes across. He does a little bit of a touch on Adam. Big, big squeeze, really, on Adam. But Adam's still on the inside, going into Woodcut Chicane. He's forcing Mikey onto the line he really doesn't want to be on. But Matt should get a good run here. He's going to look to the outside. Adam Morris loses the rear end slightly. Good car control to keep it in line. But Mikey gets the lead. On to lap six. The question is, can he get away from the chasing guys? Because he's now got six tenths, but no slipstream. There's James. He has been overtaken by the Les. There's Jack. He's passed Webby to Johnny. He's in six at the moment. He's got a couple of seconds to D Whitehouse. Uh, this obviously going to be a bit of damage limitation when I say that, but uh, Cam is two spots ahead of him and will take the lead of this championship. Rani Matt's now under pressure from Cam. As they head towards Stowe. Matt maybe just letting Cam go through, knowing he's the quicker man. Maybe can use Cam to get past the others. Meanwhile, I think D. Whitehouse has made a mistake somewhere. He is now in the clutches of Jack TM53 Synopsis. Jack is closing in, courtesy of that slipstream. This for a top five place. Jack breaks early. He looks, he's going to try and get the run on the main straight here. And unfortunately, that's going to gift the perfect opportunity because D. Whitehouse cutting the chicane, possibly because the car was unbalanced. That will be a slowdown, I'm afraid. As long as the slowdowns are on. Fortunately, D. Whitehouse has just picked one up. And whether he serves it or not is a different matter altogether. Down the hangar straight once more on lap number seven. Cam not quite making uh, as much progress. He's catching Adam Morris, but uh, Adam trying to stick with Mikey here. Mikey proving a, a strong force to be reckoned with in this championship already on his debut. As Steve Williams runs wide, out of stow, and Jack looking to the inside of club corner. Should get the run, does get the run. Takes away fifth place from D.Y. House, but the switch back from D.Y. House looking down towards Abby and the Woodcut Chicane can't quite get there. And look who's behind D. Whitehouse, Dave and Johnny, here we go again. They're yet again together on track with Fourfish just behind. D. Whitehouse looking to defend from Johnny. Oh, and he slides one down the inside of Jack. Jack was not expecting that one. I think an almost unintentional move from D. Whitehouse slides it under defence down the inside of Jack. Jack goes to turn in, and there's a BMW there. So Jack loses two, well, to effectively three places in that move. But Johnny is all over the back of, uh, of D. Whitehouse. And speaking of that, he's now alongside, down the inside, four Beckett's. Adam Morris, that, there he is, he's had a moment somewhere. Adam Morris has had a spin. He's dropped back to fourth, which is not going to help his championship campaign. Johnny threw on D.Y. House for fifth, though. This four-car battle for the top final, top five place. 
I hate to say it, but Mikey, it's now got a two second gap to Cam on 3 d so unless Cam's got some real pace in him, Mikey looks to be getting this one, getting the job done as Jack looked to the inside of Four Fish going into club corner. Yeah, not a, not a massive defence from Four Fish. As Johnny goes really wide, Jack, a flash of the lights, maybe to say thank you or let's go together now. Jack often flashes lights when he wants to work with a driver. You can see Adam Morris up and up the road, but here comes D.Y. House 7 down the inside of Johnny into the chicane. He's gone very deep. That's going to be into the tyre bundles. It, oh, interesting re-entry. That's not going to be wise. And again, another collision which forces Jack around. Jack will not be very happy with this. Down to 12th now for our championship leader. D.Y. Harris is, is waiting. It was a bit of a poor re-entry that from D.Y. House. It'll be interesting to see what the stewards might make of that one. Meanwhile, Cam 3 Diz has closed half a second on Mikey here on lap number nine. The gap's just opening up slightly now. Four fish up into sixth, but he's a couple of seconds off of Johnny, who is in turn five seconds off of Adam. Adam's time there confirming he had uh, a bit of a spin or an incident somewhere. A 145-0. And yet again, Jack's got to put on the recovery drive of his life in about five laps. He's got Cobra 2012 ahead of him. See how far he can get up this order. The running slightly wide is not going to be very helpful in this matter. Slightly down the field, you've got Shadow Stalker, who's got uh, Traumatic Dave behind him for company, about a second between the two. I don't know what's happened to Bob, he was running quite high up in the order and he's dropped to 13th. It's not looking too bad though. And the Shadow Stalker goes through the woodcut chicane. Mikey is kind of running away now, 1.8 seconds, here comes Jack TM53 synopsis though with Cobra 2012 just ahead. This for the First position in the top 10, 10th place. Cobra runs wide, pretty stock standard move from Jack to the inside, completes the move through Chapel. A fairly basic move to kickstart this recovery. He's got Jamesy now 4.2 ahead of him. I wonder how that can develop. If I was Cobra, I'd be following Jack right now. Maybe learning a few lines for the last four, last four laps. See if he can tag along to get up to the back of Jamesy together. Meanwhile, Shadow Stalker, a bit of a wide line through Stowe, and it's costing the place to Traumatic Dave, and it's cost him even more time with a spin. That was not the ideal line from the very start of that clip. Very wide on entry, and they, there you go, on the grass, the car just spins back around. Um, very wide on entry, that's for, for Shadow Stalker. And he's going to have more company soon, because Tim's on his way. Tim at the back in 16th, but not giving up just yet. Meanwhile, Four Fish has the company, because, I don't know how, but the Les has got up into 7th place. This is a fantastic drive in the Les. He had an issue... Earlier on, we don't know what that was, which dropped him down near like the 13th, 12th, 13th area. He's battled his way back up to 7th, and he's now looking to challenge Four Fish for 6th, and ultimately will be looking to try and get Johnny for 5th. With Jack having such a bad round here, he needs to... Uh, he needs to try and capitalise on this. 
especially with Cam, 1, 2, 3, Diz in second, because at the moment Cam will take the lead of this championship. This one's a bit wide, four fish. On the back of Johnny, he's got the nice bit of slipstream there. Looking to the outside. Good close quarter racing. And Fourfish gets the move down through the woodcut chicane. A fantastic race. Johnny doesn't see Les though on the outside. He does give him space eventually. And Les obviously not too happy with it, but uh, I don't think Johnny entirely knew he was there. Uh, and I've more than likely had understeer coming out of the second half of the woodcut chicane. Especially. Uh, especially the line Johnny was forced upon there. It, it really isn't a nice line. You have to either be on and off the, the throttle to make the car grip up, or you just got to try and get on with it as fast as you can. As Johnny, you know, a little bit of a moment through Beggies, so just off camera. And the big story is Mikey's made the mistake. Mikey has made a mistake, so he's now 3.3 behind Cam. He is going to be kicking himself. Cam, one, two, three days, leads this race by three seconds with just two laps to go. Through club corner, though, for Johnny and the Les. And also, we've got Big Bloody B defending from Jamesy going into club corner. Jamesy around the outside. Can he complete the move? And he, what is Jack going to do here? He's got two cars ahead of him. Door closes through Abbey, but he's going to get a good run on the exit. He's going to get alongside Big Bloody B. The Les has got past web user Johnny. Into the woodcut chicane. Jack gets ahead of Big Bloody B. Interesting line, that, from Big Bloody B, if I'm completely honest. But uh, I don't think he's really gained anything there. And now Jack on the back of PZR Jamesy. Around the outside of Jamesy through Cobb's corner. Oh, and he has a bit of a twitch on the exit. Amazingly, still alongside into Maggots, up towards Beckett's. This for the penultimate time of the race. Jack looking for the switch back as they head towards Chapel. And Big Bloody B almost looking interested to make this three wide. Gets a bit of a, a door slammed in his face, but he's going to pick up the slipstream from Jack here. And into Stowe, he's going to have the inside line on Jamesy, but can't do a lot with it. The controller probably not a great piece of equipment for Stowe Corner. Meanwhile, our leaders have started their final lap. They're just going through Cops Corner. Cam, one, two, three, D's leads. Mikey, again, we don't know what happened. I'm, I'm assuming he had a bit of an oversteer moment. Maybe even a, a 4 three, 60 that ended up with him in the right direction afterwards. But he's not going to be happy with that. He has lost out on what was pretty much... A sign sealed, delivered win at Silverstone Classic. The Lairs probably too far away now from four fish. 1.3 seconds, unless he can pull an absolute miracle. Uh, Jack again, he's not going to catch away because Johnny's going to be staying in eighth place. Jack heads through Beckett's, but we're going to go back to our leaders because not a lot of action really happening right now, weirdly enough, on the end of this race. 2.2 seconds, the gap between first and second. Camp, a fantastic drive. He's not really put a foot wrong this race. As he enters Woodcut Chicane for the final time. It will be Cam, 1, 2, 3, D, who wins here at Silverstone Classic.
A fantastic back of the pack to win drive. Mikey will be kicking himself a 1.2 deficit in the end. Rally Matt, a fantastic podium. Adam Morris, what could have been? Again, he's made a mistake during the race and he's paid as he goes home in fourth place. Full fish. Again, another great drive from the back of the pack in fifth. The Les, sixth. Johnny will take home seventh. Jack, TM53 synopsis. He's been very unlucky this race. Made a very good drive up into the likes of the top five. But it's going to be eighth place for him. Big Bloody B will be in ninth. Peter R. Jamesy, tenth with D. Whitehouse just behind in 11th. Bob Mark 1. Again, we don't really know what happened to Bob, but he's just kind of tailed off. But he's finished in 12th. And again, more points on the board. Cobra 2012 has gone down the order as well. He's now 13th. Traumatic Dave. Liking the BMW more than this Sierra, but just still not uh, not very nice. Tim just goes through some barriers for good measure for the cleanup crew. In 16th. Traumatic Dave, 14th. And the last man to cross the line, just coming through Club Corner now, will be Shadow Stalker DVS. So, provisional results. Cam, one, two, three, Diz is in. Though it's, our, it's your winner, is pretty much the simple point. And, for good measure, takes the fastest lap point as well. Mikey finishes second again. Like I say, he's probably going to be kicking himself. With what a silly mistake, I suspect, costing that race by 1.5 seconds. Rally Matt is third, with Adam Morris fourth, four fish, fifth, the Les in sixth, Johnny seventh, Jack in eighth, Big Bloody B is in ninth, Jamesy in tenth, D Whitehouse eleventh, Bob Mark one, twelfth, Cobra in thirteenth, Dramatic Day fourteenth, and Shadow Stalker fifteenth, with NGR Tim rounding out the grid and a lap down. So that's the end of the Paramax Group A1s for round before here at Silverstone Classic. Next week for the Group A1s. We head for the 150th Group A1 race. And that being... Nürburgring Nordschleife in the BMW M1 Pro Car. That's going to be one to watch. That is for sure, so do tune in next week. Next up will be the Paramax Modern Touring Cars from Silverstone National. That will be coming up in shortly in hopefully around 10 minutes' time, so do stay tuned for that one. I'll be closing this stream, reopening a new one. So hopefully you'll join us then for that. But for myself and guys of the Group A1s, thanks to Paramax for sponsoring the league. It's a fantastic thing to have with packing. And we thank you all for watching the Group A1s for round four here at Silverstone Classic. But until next week, good night. <laughs>